TUTCAST is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Enter coupon code TUT1 and save an additional 10% off your GoDaddy.com purchases. Hey there and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial from TUTCAST.com. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this hard drive icon that you see in front of you. This is a hard drive icon I created a few days ago, and I'm going to show you how to replicate this design in this tutorial. Now, to begin, we're going to start off by creating a new document. We're going to go to File, New, and I'm going to make it 400 by 400. Now, typically, icon sizes at the largest are 256 by 256. I like starting big and scaling it down later. This just ensures we can get as much detail in as possible. So we're going to click OK and make sure our background color is set to white. Now we're going to begin by creating the top layer right here. We're going to not focus on the highlight at the beginning. We're going to focus on the top layer right here first. So to create this layer, what we're going to do, we're going to grab our rounded rectangle tool right over here in the tools palette. And at the top, we're going to set the radius to around 15. And we're going to set the style to none. And the color is going to be set to black, just so we can see it on the white background. We're going to hold down our shift key, and we're going to drag out a nice big square, just like that. And now what we have to do, we have to define some perspective to make it look like it's going backwards into the background. And to do that, we're going to head over to our tools palette and grab our move tool right at the top here. And at the top, make sure that Show Transform Controls is checked on. If you're on CS2 or below, I believe it's called Show Bounding Box. So we're going to check that on, and you'll notice that our shape now has these Transform Controls at the top and at the side. If you're on a Mac, hold down Command, Option, and Shift. If you're on a PC, it's Control, Alt, and Shift. And drag inwards the top, one of the top nodes, just like this and then I'll bring both of them in together. So bring those in and then bring this down like this. And scale it until it looks somewhat realistic like it's going into the background. And when you're finished with it, press enter. So now that we have the basic shape, what we're going to do, we're going to actually apply some layer styles. And to do that, I'm going to move this over a little bit. We're going to go to layer layer style, and then gradient overlay. And to access our gradient editor, we're going to click on the gradient bar right here. And here we go with our gradient editor. Now, for the colors, we're going to make a nice gray, silvery type of color. The bottom color right here, which is our black color, we want a nice light gray, just like that. And for the top color, because it's going into the background, it's going away from us, we want it a little bit darker. So we're going to double click on that and make it a little bit darker just like that and click on OK. And then once again, click OK. I'm now going to add a stroke, which is an outline to our layer. And I'm going to add a nice silver gray stroke. And I'm going to add an inner shadow as well. The blend mode is going to be set to normal. The color is going to be set to white. The angle is going to be set to negative 90. Distance is going to be set a little bit lower. And the size can be set to 0. I'm going to turn down the opacity just a little bit. And there we go. We're going to click on OK. So we now have the top layer pretty much complete. As you can see, it looks somewhat accurate to what we have here. And we're now going to create the bottom layer, which is a little bit more difficult. You'll notice if I pull this layer out from the background, out from the top layer, it looks a little bit different than it does when it's behind it. And we're going to deal with these issues right now. So before we begin creating that layer, we're going to set up a few rulers, just so it's as precise as possible. We're going to start by turning snapping off. So we're going to go to view and then make sure snap is turned off. So there we go. Now we're going to zoom in here. And if you don't have your rulers, which are these at the side and the top, Hold down Command or Control and press R. And once that's done, we're going to drag out rulers right at the sides here. Just right where it meets, right where it finishes curving upwards, right there. And we're going to go over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Right there. 
All right, so once the rulers are set up and ready to go, we're gonna head back to our rounded rectangle tool right there. At the top, the radius is set to 15 once again. The style is set to none and the color we can set at black as well. So we're gonna zoom in here and starting at the top left hand corner of our rulers, we're gonna drag out like this and you'll notice that it snaps. As long as you have snap turned on, it snaps to the rulers just like that. So drag out an area for your base your preferred size. I'm gonna leave it right around there. And in our layers palette, we wanna make sure it's actually behind our top layer. So we're gonna drag it down just like that. And you'll notice it puts it right behind it. So I'm gonna turn off my rulers by holding down Command or Control and pressing the colon key. And you'll notice if we zoom in here, we have a little bit of a space. Well, we need to make this base look like it's curving around that corner. To do that, we're gonna to head to our tools palette we're going to grab our direct selection tool right there and if we click on this base and we click on the path you'll notice that these nodes appear we're going to click on this node here and we're going to go over to this side here holding down shift click on this node here and drag them both upwards they should drag upwards together and drag it right around that area and if we zoom out you'll notice that it looks like it's going around the corner it's curving a little bit which is exactly what we want. And now we want to add some layer styles to it to make it look like it's part of the whole hard drive. So once again, layer, layer style, gradient overlay. But this time we wanna make sure that our angle is set to zero so it's going horizontally. And again, click on the gradient bar. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to define a base color. So we're gonna click on the left hand node. And we're gonna define a base color just like this. Click OK and do the exact same color for the right hand node. We can click on the node once and then sample this color here. And once that's done, we want to add two more nodes. So clicking below the bar, we want to add a node around 15%. You can see the location at the bottom here. And we want to add another node around 85%. So once all four nodes are in place, we want to change the far end nodes. So we're going to double click on the far left one and we're going to make it darker. And we're going to double click on the far right one and make that darker as well. And once that's done, you can go ahead and fine tune the colors. I'm going to increase the brightness on this one just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit more silvery. And then click OK and OK. Once again, I'm going to add a slight inner shadow. Blend mode is normal. Color is white. Angle is negative 90, size is zero, and distance is, I'm gonna set it at two. Turn down the opacity just a little bit. And the last thing we're going to do, we're gonna add a drop shadow. So click on drop shadow. The angle is gonna be set to 90. Distance, I'm gonna to decrease to around three. And opacity, I'm gonna decrease a little bit as well. I'm also gonna change the contour to Gaussian, this one right here and maybe increase the opacity just a tiny bit. And there we go, and click on OK. So if we compare it to the, orig the original hard drive, it's looking somewhat accurate. This one's a little bit different. I spent a lot more time on it than I did with this one. The last thing we're going to do before we wrap this up is we're gonna add the highlight. And to do that, in our layers palette, we're gonna find our top layer, holding down Command or Control, click on it, which will load it as a selection. We're gonna grab our lasso tool, our polygonal lasso tool, holding down Alt or Option, select the area that you don't want selected, just like this. And it'll leave us with this selection up here. We're gonna create a new, new layer right here. Grabbing the gradient tool, make sure it's set to foreground to transparent. Make sure the foreground color is white. We're gonna start below our selection and drag upwards, which will add a nice gradient on top of our layer. So anyway, there you go, there you have it. Very basic hard drive icon. You can go so much further with this. You can play around with the colors. You can play around with the size and shape of it. You can do whatever you want to it. I'm just giving you a basic idea of how to create a hard drive icon in Photoshop. So I hope you picked up some tips in this tutorial. And until next time, this is Howard from tutcast.com. Take care.